of Detonation, where we are busy putting death out of business, and we have a fantastic episode here for you today. It's the wonderful, beautiful Liz Parrish has come over to help us in our quest to conquer and defeat death. We're going to talk gene therapies, but before we do, let's say thanks to our sponsors. Thank you to Thrivus. Uh, we all know Thrivus, Lincoln Cannon, over there doing great work in Utah with supplements. Uh, 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 you know, you know the deal. Uh, Five dollars all the way up to one hundred and sixty dollars. The rules are in the description. The more you share this link around, the more free thrivers you're going to get. Also, I want to thank David Kelly. I am transhuman. Lots more great posts coming out on that website all the time. It's a great campaign. You should get on it. All right, Liz, welcome to the show. It's great to have you uh, from BioViva. Um, just quickly introduce, we talk about you a lot actually on the show, a lot of people come on and talk about you and we talk about gene therapy a lot, but who are you? Who, who, who is this Liz we've all heard about? Uh, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Who the hell am I? I don't know because I'm losing my mind with this quarantine. It's, uh, so 2020 and we are so, um, quarantined right now. I'm in the Pacific Northwest. So uh, first and foremost, I say I'm a mother. Uh, my son got sick in 2013 and I went on a quest to find cures for kids. I ran into the aging technology uh, at the SENS conference in the UK that later that year and I learned about aging. And so uh, how did that make me uh, who I am today and why I'm sitting here? Um, I realized that we could actually spearhead cures for kids much faster by treating an aging population. There are 100,000 people that need access to medicine today because they are dying without it. Uh, it that's almost, well, that can be over if it's over 100,000 uh, people a day, uh, over 37 million people every year. It's a catastrophe and we need to work more more quickly uh, to get drugs uh, to people. We need to get access of research uh, to humans, find out if it works in humans, forget the mice, and uh, get it uh, expedited uh, to use. And that will help uh, childhood disease. So we can actually help everyone at one time. And I, I was so quick to, to make that assessment based on the, the two years before I started BioViva and before my son got sick, actually two years before he got sick, I had been volunteering my time for the use of stem cells. So I'd learned a lot about regenerative medicine and got excited about genetics. So anyway, fast forward, um, I meet uh, people in the regenerative medicine, in the gene therapy space, looking at uh, potential cures uh, through gene therapies. And I found two gene therapies that I was particularly interested in that could help uh, uh, 8 billion people. <laughs> and uh, one was a telomerase uh, inducing gene therapy. It lengthens the ends of the caps of your chromosomes that shorten as your cells divide and are associated with the diseases of aging. And the second one was a myostatin inhibitor and it muscles you up and it had been used for children with uh, muscular dystrophy, but could be uh, reassessed and reevaluated for the use of an aging population, something called sarcopenia, which is you getting, having less Less muscle mass over time. So uh, we launched BioViva with me taking those two gene therapies. And if anyone uh, talks about what we're doing, that's generally what they talk about. But in the next year or two, we're going to change dramatically what they talk about when they talk about BioViva. Wow, yeah. And, and I've noticed the evolution of BioViva. I've been following BioViva for a long time. I've been following a lot of the biotech companies for a long time. And, you know, we went through the biotech bubble for a bit there. There was a lot of biotech uh, enthusiasm and then they popped out of existence as, as the money sort of dried up. But you survived. You, hang, you held on and you survived and you've actually evolved a little bit. The company has evolved a little bit as it's got those data inputs and it's become a bit more of a, a data company. But it's, it's kind of changed and evolved a bit. And that's exactly like we're talking about self-directed evolution. And, you know, as a, as a CEO, uh, you know, you have to work out how to self-directly evolutionize the sort of the company in order to keep it uh, yeah. strong and relevant. And I think, that's, I think that's why you've survived. I think that's why you've done so well and flourished. And actually, uh, you're on your way to, to really changing the landscape of gene therapy, which is not only because we stand on the precipice right now gene therapies are we're not we're not quite there yet we're not quite at the the cost hasn't come down just enough yet but we're almost 
on the t at the tipping point where where gene therapies are going to become something that you can almost just get on Amazon. Like it's we're not there yet, but that's kind of that's kind of where we want to go, right? Now, do your gene therapy with a medical doctor. <laughs> but yeah, it is it, the the costs of gene therapy are actually coming down already. So let me tell you, yeah, we did some pivots. We had to be very agile in this um, state of affairs of of the things that we wanted to achieve. And so, what we wanted to achieve is giving people access to therapeutics. And it turned out that you know that's not really considered legal in the U.S. because we have the FDA, and there's a huge cost associated with doing business with the FDA. And there's a huge background associated with the amount of uh, paperwork and things like that that have to be done. And we don't think that a huge cost should be associated with safety. And so we think that we can be really safe and, and not have to... Uh, uh, do things the traditional way in the U.S. So a billion dollars to a drug and the drug is 15 years old by the time it comes out is not the new way to do business. So BioViva couldn't actually treat patients so, because we're a U.S. company. And so what we did is we pivoted into a bioinformatics company. And so now we have a product called the BioVault where anyone can come and, and basically think of it as like Dropbox for your health data. You can store your multi-omics health data there and you can either allow us to or not allow us to use that to help uh, cure aging. And then we've got something called the Timekeeper, which is a methylation kit, and it basically helps you understand what your biological age is. And your age is your biggest risk factor for mortality, your biological age being more succinctly assigned to that. So why do some people die in their 60s and some people die at 120? Well, it's your biological age and how your body's aging. And the great thing is you can affect that test with lifestyle changes or hopefully gene therapy interventions. The reason we develop it is we wanted to see how gene therapies were performing. And then we started research uh, and development at Rutgers University, and we are hoping that the paper that comes out, uh, we are waiting for the treated mice to die. They're doing extremely well, which is fortunate, but kind of unfortunate because it delays the paper. But I think that it will be a, um, a pillar paper of longevity science. So stay tuned for that, that it's going to be amazing. And we're, we're developing a new vector delivery method there where we can get multiple genes into each cell predictably. So let's say you have a gene therapy like, you know, you're working with some of the Yamanaka factors and you want to reverse the aging in a cell. Well, you can't get those three genes into one gene therapy delivery method right now if you're using AAV, but you could get them all three predictably into the cell with, with our technology. So we're excited about that. So, but wait a minute, what about patients? Because they're my focus. We partnered with a company called Integrative Health Systems and they today offer gene therapies. And is the technology there? Well, we're learning uh, whether the technology is there for treating aging or not, but we have to put things into perspective. Today, there are five regulated gene therapies and they're a one-time treatment for a cure. So those are gene therapies who have gone through a regulatory system. They are a one-time treatment for a lifetime cure for the patients. So that's the type, that's the power of the technology. So that the, the proof of concept is there that the technology can work, but how do we affect aging? Uh, we know that it'll probably be multiple genes and we're trying to work out those combinations now. And our partner company offers, I think, four different gene therapies today. So Integrated Health Systems, is this a US-based company or is this a, a, a company that's offshore or how does that work? It's an offshore company. It's an offshore company. Uh, so a US-based company can't do that type of work and so that's why we partnered with them. Cool. Yeah, that sounds that sounds super exciting. So, um, you know, we, you're talking about gene therapy. So let's, let's talk about what, why, you know, why is it that we have to take aging seriously? Why, do, why is this idea that aging is a disease so important to curing other diseases? So, you know, because a lot of energy and effort is, is invested into curing cancer or polio or vaccines or infectious diseases or, or dementia. But, you know, why, why aging? What, what is, what's the point? Like most people don't really think about aging as being disease. It's a natural process. You're born, you age, you get older. That just happens, Liz. What are you talking about? 
Yeah, well, there's a lot of cognitive dissonance around there. A lot of the myths of the things that we've been told. So whether you're talking about, you know, social constructs or you're talking about evolution and the, the lifespan of a species, uh, there's a lot of uh, belief systems that, you know, aging is a natural process. But, you know, I mean, polio is a natural process. Cancer is a natural process. Heart disease is a natural process. And, you know, people raise millions of dollars to try to cure those things. But the reason that we're not successful is because we're not treating aging so it's the, the the cellular degeneration that is causing the diseases that we die of so heart disease cancer dementia uh, organ failure whether it be your kidneys your liver or anything else is all basically um, cellular degeneration and we look at the hallmarks of aging so there's there's arguably 10 hallmarks of aging some people think there's just nine because we split one of them into a more uh, probably uh, succinct uh, level of two uh, processes and these processes are the real diseases so mitochondrial dysfunction is a disease Til telomere attrition is a disease if it's not it should be then we don't have to bulk it into aging biological aging uh, we could just say you know nutrient sensing is a disease but right now we say biological aging is a disease because it's all in one package and it encompasses the whole process so we want you to get chronologically old but we don't want you to get biologically old because because it's the number one risk factor for death. Um, and the reason is, is that cellular de degeneration is driving all of those diseases that you just mentioned, which are actually just symptoms of the process. And we've already shown that through some of these gene therapies and different stem cells techniques, you can reverse the aging of the cell and therefore uh, make the uh, organism more youthful. It's been proven in a multitude of uh, model organisms. What you know, there's a there's a there's a comment, there's a, a sort of a theory that goes around and it says, you know, the world is too populated, there's too many people in the world. Uh, you know, why would you wanna uh, you know, isn't isn't death part of a natural process of of rejuvenation and giving resources to young people and stuff? Uh, 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 is 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 that a relevant conversation? It, what, you know, is can the Earth support a massive population if we do cure aging and all that stuff? It, do these people have any sort of uh, any sort of argument? Well, I mean, they certainly. I mean, you can make a, you can create a problem to every solution, and if you want to do that, you know, you, you're free to do that. But unfortunately, it doesn't help the the situation. It just, you know, convolutes it. There is sciences working in technology. We're feeding more people than ever. We're we're helping lift more people out of poverty every year than ever. And how we want to go on populating the planet is vastly up to us. It is proven in every corner of the world that as lifespan increases, birth rates go down. So there are less people being born. And that might not even be something that we want because these technologies are going to allow us to live safer and healthier in space. They're going to allow us to expand. We are of the earth. We're not a, a separate entity to it. We're not these destructive, terrible things that came here to do awful things. We actually do quite interesting things and we have this consciousness to do amazing things. And now we have the, the tools of self evolution and creating the human bodies with better knowledge, better intelligence, faster, stronger, more healthier. And what we're going to do with that is going to be exponential. I mean, look at the Industrial Revolution. We create all of the uh, great technology based on lifespan. So when people live longer, their whole nation is lifted up. That actually, you can look at that everywhere in the world. You start companies start getting resources of workforce from other company com countries because the people live longer and so off the bank backs of lifespan we can do exponentially even more good so um you know the with all the technology, we're not the only technology out there. So helping people live longer is is just one technology. Feeding people, housing people, those are all different technologies and one doesn't negate the other one. This is no zero sum game. And you know, people who see, um, you know, lifespan as an issue, every day we could get out of the way for the next generations, but we don't because we embrace life. We choose life over death.
Um, why does COVID-19 have everyone freaked out? Because they're afraid they're going to die. And yet I can tell you, if we don't intervene, if you don't embrace the genetic revolution and regenerative medicine, you will 100% die. So, you know, now is the time we need to, we need to take the risk and we need to make the jump. Yeah, I, I love that. That's that's very well thought out, and uh, yeah, that's great. The other the other argument, I guess, the negative argument is the tyranny of the rich. That these gene therapies and things are only going to be accessible to rich people. Uh, what what do you say to that argument? That it's a it's an intellectual and monetary tyranny over the the poorer masses who can't access these technologies. These technologies. Well, you know, the thing is, is that people with money generally do spearhead all of innovation. Uh, the government, since NASA has vastly stepped back from it, uh, it would be nice if they stepped up and funded more of this type of technology. Um, people with money are funding your future. And it makes sense for people with money to not only get this type of technology for themselves, but help everyone and mass to get it. So it goes back to that lifespan in industrialization of countries. If somebody, if you have a workforce and they live long enough to train them and then them to be good at the task and actually you know, add to the economy, that's beneficial. The longer they live healthy, it's even more beneficial. So each one of the aging diseases is a trillion dollar di uh, disease. So it costs, in some cases, the whole globe a trillion dollars. And in some countries, one disease is a trillion dollar disease. We can't really afford that. And this year, 2020, we have more people over the age of 65 on the planet mm -hmm. than under the age of five. That's under the age of five, and that's the whole world. So you're still talking about co countries that are vastly still developing. They have most of the young children. That's the workforce that will pay for these aging diseases. Unless you want to do something really inhumane and just walk these people off of a cliff, it's a huge financial burden. So fixing the problem is the most ethical thing to do. Yeah, and that's why it's so important to put aging right at the center of the mandala of of disease uh, eradication. Uh, you know, this 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 will help to cure a lot, knock out a lot of these multi-trillion-dollar diseases in oh, one yeah. go. And in this case, it'll be one drug to rule them all. That you will treat aging and you will eradicate most of cancer. Cancer is uh, pretty stochastic and it happens for various reasons. You will er eradicate almost all heart disease, almost all kidney and organ failure, all dementia. It just by do treating one thing, which is you know, the accumulation of damage that's happening. We want to create the first body that stays in homeostasis. That's BioViva's goal. The first body that repairs just a little bit more quickly than it disrepairs. That's so cool. Yeah. I'm, I am so, I am, I'm going to keep, keep on my news feed for that. Uh, uh, keep, keep me updated about that. So the other thing I guess is that the costs of these gene therapies, the technology costs is always coming down and companies like BioViva and, and other companies and maybe governments as well are starting to produce at scale, something called at scale. On economics, it means you know, it, 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 get, it gets cheaper as the, as the technologies get more efficient. So you know, so will will in a f in the future, for example, I envision classrooms where you know in the seventies in the nineteen seventies or something, you'd have a multi million or multi billion dollar infrastructure project with a lab with a, with a lot of very smart scientists and an old computer, and they were working at a gene therapy, and it was extremely expensive. And I envision not too not too long away, ten years or so, just like the internet. Uh, you know, a, a classroom with a kid in year seven or, or earlier, younger, maybe a little bit older. And those guys are just making their own genes. They're just writing their own genes. They're having fun. They're learning about genes. It's going to be so cheap and so easy and so accessible. Uh, do, you, do you think the same thing will happen? That this is the new revolution and that, and that these, these technologies will become cheap for everyone to access? It doesn't matter where you are in the world. You could access the ability to learn about gene editing. 
this this is biotech century for sure we're going to do amazing things so today a gene therapy that last year might have been a million dollars is is half that or a third of that and and the thing is if we could get 10 patients at a time instead of one patient at a time it goes down even more mm -hmm. and if you could get a thousand patients at a time now you're starting to get it into the price structure where most americans or australians could actually afford it um, you know, this is, and we're talking about technology that everyone would benefit from. The the thing that really creates the the problem and make it makes it so expensive today is that you know if you were just to have gene plasmids made, um, you know that that's not expensive but when you're working with delivery methods and yeah i'm going to say the the scary word viruses now these are viruses that can't get you sick they're actually modified to only deliver the gene it gets a lot more expensive but this is still the best way out of everything and trust me i've looked at everything yeah I'll post your comments below i've looked at everything it's still the most explicit way to get genes into a nucleus and be able to target certain tissue types and so um and it's not inexpensive because you're looking at making quadrillions so you've got you know you've got your little your gene and your therapy and your um your your viral vector that's you know putting it into your body now you need quadrillions of these really big number check it out get out your calculator you're gonna your mind's gonna be blown and they all have to be made at human scale they all have to be made so they're safe to go into a human body and that costs money because there's there's a lot of paperwork to be done there so you know the the technology as we find better ways but then if the technology is so cheap and, and inexpensive and you know people will start doing dangerous things that's that's their business to do that you know i just suggest that of course they do it the safest route with a medical doctor and medical researchers that's that's all i can say because we want the best outcomes possible but yeah down the road in the future hell people might be synthesizing synthesizing these things in their homes and um and hopefully there's a known outcome very likely that'll be things like rna like short lasting gene therapies because if you're going to do something permanent you really want to know what you're doing yeah yeah and you know that 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 is a few for a future emerging uh, challenges and that's for legislators and ethicists and bioethicists and things to work out how, how exactly we go about how we exactly go about the yeah uh, but i want you to be in the conversation because bioethicists sometimes aren't the most ethical people because a bioethicist tells you today that a drug needs to be safe before it's used in a human but that's not what a trial is that's not what a study is and drugs can't be made safe without without getting them into humans and taking some amount of risks so like you as the people watching you need to be involved and you need to demand the agency and the autonomy of your own body to do what you need to do to keep it healthy. Yeah, yeah, that's that that is a good point. Uh, I'm I'm totally down uh yeah with that. Um oh, I, I, there was a, there was a point in there that that uh anyway. Yeah, yeah, individual sovereignty. And I guess that's that's what makes you so special when you uh you uh you did you did the uh, the, the therapies on yourself because you know, uh, I think I've read somewhere you said, uh, you know, uh, one therapy on a human is a hundred thousand mice or something like that, and and that's yeah. kind of you know mouse squared, right? So uh, that's right. Yeah. What do we do with mouse data? I mean, we've got a lot of excellent mouse data. We have data from mice that telomerase induction, for instance, if we just want to sit there for a minute, extends the lifespan, uh, makes them healthier. They, they don't have as many age-associated disorders and they, it does not increase the risk of cancer. As a matter of fact, it decreases the risk of cancer. And yet that gene therapy, until I did it, had sat there for decades. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. at least a decade with the AAV. I mean, it's amazing. You know, I was looking at these labs and they're like, well, we use the gene therapy to know how much expression of telomerase you need in order to test it against other substances. And I'm like, why aren't we just using the gene therapy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. I mean, you know, we have to we have to get to to the point, or else we don't live to see it. We're a very intelligent species. We need to use that intelligence for the betterment of our species. You know, we are, we are a, a beacon to this very quiet universe. We have a lot to do, and you know, we need to not be so risk adverse that we continue to die of the same diseases without doing something yeah, especially about- with the cognitive knowledge that this is the problem it's, it's like it's like the other one that is kind of like a, a suicidal uh idea if if we if we go down this going actually we know the problem but we're going to continue to ignore it it's kind of like eating unhealthy food every day knowing it's going to kill you but being addicted to the sugar and the fats and going well you know i'm going to ignore that that process uh you know another question i had is is technology is is advancing in other fields supercomputers are coming along you know and all these other things are happening as well we're going to space so there's a lot more um to think about in 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 your realm and in the other realms and they're sort of converging and 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 it's good because you know you could the supercomputers can knock out like huge amounts of compounds which makes makes your field easier instead of having to shift through thousands of compounds and stuff but it's kind of cool because, like, I, I imagine, I envision a world where gene therapies could could actually come out of, let's say, out of the realm of just helping humans in a certain way, and um, help the environment and do other things as well. So, for example, uh, I could envision uh, maybe. Um, you know, like a glow-in-the-dark tree, and you could have glow-in-the-dark trees that that light up uh, cities, and so it reduces the power consumption. You know, for dirty coal, if we still use coal, and we still burn. You know, unfortunately, we still burn uh, en- coal for energy, which pollutes the atmosphere. So, if we could replace uh, um, street lamps with glow-in-the-dark trees, how cool would that be? Do you see? Uh, do you see gene therapies leaking out into? other forms of life, uh, other, 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 other fields other than human health? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So there's a, there's a few things that you actually touched on there. And, and one of them is, is uh, the power of computing. And so that's helping us a lot with protein folding right now. So that's a really cool area of science. And it helps us, you know, fit uh, proteins to uh, molecules and understand the shape of proteins so that we can affect them. So that's really cool. And then Gene therapy, uh, then there's another part of it, gene therapy sort of liberating uh, our human bodies to do the things that we want to do. Do you want to be stronger, smarter, faster? Those are basic things that we can already do today. And then, uh, you know, where do you want to live and how do you want to live? Yeah, absolutely. And then when we look at the environment, again, you know, the reason that we know, the reason we've quantified and qualified all the damage we've done to the environment is not to be sickos and sadists, it's to fix the problem. We are working towards consciously uh, developing technology and brainstorming how do we fix this very important problem because you can think of all the trillions of cells in our body, but our earth is like one big cell yeah. and we live in its atmosphere and we kind of live on its nucleus and and we're, we, it's the most uh, amazing imaginative world. I mean, if you don't think that your life is a, a, an amazing uh, miracle of, of science and technology and all the things that came together to make it, just go look out the window and, and try to think that without seeing that you could ever have imagined that in your mind. It, it's, it's an amazing place. We need to take care of it. And the reason we've done all of these assessments is because we want to work towards uh, taking care of that. And then we get into political disputes and financial disputes disputes and that's all that's all nothing but mammalian silliness so uh, much of human behavior is coded by our genes we have this desire this you know we're still doing mammalian uh, sim- simplicities uh, you know mating stockpiling uh, you know nationalist type behaviors and all of those are just silly mammalian things those are things that we can leave behind in the future I, mm. I can't entirely foresee it because I am 100% locked in uh, to this system, but I want to change this system so that we can bust out of it. And we desire to do that. We desire to have bigger ideas, to be more unlimited, to work together as a collective. And um, this, you know, that's where we need to go with this technology. So when we look at the biology around us, not only can we affect the biology around us, uh, we could potentially affect our uh 
pets and our um, we probably won't call them pets in the future and and the the plants and the trees uh, to be more beneficial to the outcome of the planet and more beneficial to us but we will start taking their genes and using them inside of us so there are a lot of really impressive organisms that have a myriad of benefits, benefits like the Mexican salamander, the axiotl, who you can chop its whole arm off and it'll grow everything back, including the, the phalanges. And even you can remove parts of its brain and its spine. And um, the, the genes from light sensing algae were used in humans in 2016 to see if they could mm. cure blindness. And squids can see in pentachromacy and we can only see in billions of colors i mean millions of colors they can see in billions you know there's a lot of benefits all around us so it's not just modifying them but taking their uh technology and transferring it to ourselves for benefits so i guess i guess my final question is is are we seeing the version of the human species is is this i mean it's self-directed evolution it's kind of like evolution is is directing itself through us uh is this is this the beginning of a species diversion is there going to be different types of people and are there already different types of people well there already are so a lot of people will say something like um well you know wouldn't people uh dope for uh sports genes and things like that well, people are already born with a sports advantage and that's why they're professional sports players and you're not. Uh, some people have a better, I, higher IQ and I don't. Uh, I'll just put that one on me. And, um, you know, and it goes on and on and on. We see that we have a human genome, but we have different alleles. People are more susceptible for Alzheimer's or cancer. Um, those are differences. And what we can do plainly is, is make it an even playing field so that everyone can think well and perform well. And then we can, we can go beyond that. And how people want to diverge into their genetics uh, should vastly be up to themselves. I mean, that, that should be, you should have the ability to, to do those things. We're at the very early stages of that. So we, we can't modify obviously everything, but really the sky's the limit. What we can do with the technology in the future will be um, really absolutely unlimited and then we'll be able to push the boundaries uh, to see where we want to go but right now we know as a civilization we want to go towards health uh, and and the happiness the more happiness that that can bring us that doesn't solve all the world's problems you're still going to have your heartaches but honestly it goes a long way to making the world a better place yeah i i, t I, t I can't I, I i i have to agree there totally you know health span is is something that everyone is striving for at the moment it's becoming the new the new cool thing uh and a, a gene therapy is going to be uh, a tool in that in that toolkit uh improving your health and your wealth and your life and living longer you know the uh the uh uh, food revolution you know people eating better better food more ethical food is, is already taking off uh, the meat uh, you know this uh, this um, lab grown meats is starting to take off because people are starting I'm to looking think forward to that because I've been a vegetarian for like 30 years and so I, I really miss chicken and I want real ch <laughs> I want real ethical chicken <laughs> yeah yeah it's taking <laughs> off because people you be humans are humans still in in that primitive in that primitive cave person way and we still deserve Desire those those flavors and tastes bit going way back but you know these this will provide an ethical t alternative and and you've seen the vegan revolution and the uh, take off around the world especially in 2019 it was absolutely massive and it's because people are changing internally they're becoming more ethical more health conscious more conscious about a strata whether that be so, so, so sociological strata or class strata or because we're, we're all starting to feel that we all live on Gaia we live on mother Gaia and uh, you know that this is a, a important transition in history and we all want to be around to see what happens i mean this is biotech revolution is is one shift and the ai uh, revolution is another shift and we live right on the edge of all these big shifts and and you know we, we here at detonation uh, we're trying to get people ready for some of these shifts uh, some of these shifts are already happening and and uh, we're all going to see what happens next but this is Absolutely. incredible 
We got to we got to start eating differently. I mean, this uh, pandemic goes to show that, uh, you know, since we started farming animals, by the way, everyone, you're already living longer and better through science. So, yeah. I, you know, what I'm bringing is not a new idea. It's just a next step in a new idea. But um, yeah, so as far as farming of animals, uh, this is when we saw these sort of increase of species jumping uh, viruses that are really, really deadly. So it's not a safe thing. It's not a good idea to go bring wild animals into a shop just because somebody thinks that they have to eat them. I mean, if you can't get your mind beyond, you know, a certain diet that you can't go on without eating a certain diet, you, you, you need to, we need to work on that because you're not a mind for the future. The minds for the future are, are, are ever developing and ever growing and ever changing into the new ideas of uh, the of technology and what you can do and and don't limit yourself. You you can eat an, a different diet and you can enjoy a different diet. I mean, I I'm I'm just always really surprised by the cognitive uh, dissonance and biases that people have towards things. Uh, the the uh, culture grown meat is going to be an incredible experience, and it's going to become prolific, and it will keep a lot of people from dying. Look, there's vegans all over the world that die because of you know the cow manure that they throw on lettuce, and then they get E. coli and uh, E. coli and they die. And you know that's not no 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 no. You know, there are certain things yeah. that we can do to not have that happen, and we should be doing those things. And and it is something, believe it or not, you can do it. <laughs> you'll, well, you'll Liz, th that's, that's a great show. I really <laughs> want to thank you for taking the time out to hang out with me today on Deck Nation. Uh, it's been a fascinating discussion. You know, we, we live on riding on, right, we're right on the edge of uh, the great transition, and I think you're, you're one of these... Uh, entrepreneurs, these soldiers, these uh, crusaders, right at the uh, forefront of the of the transition, and you're fighting the good fight. And I want to keep, encourage you. Not that you need my encouragement, but I want to encourage you to uh, to continue that uh, to pushing in that direction and putting death out of business, as we say here. It's our tagline. Uh, you know, uh, because we think this is the right thing to do. We want to see healthier, better, uh, more moral, uh, stronger people. Uh, that can go into the future and navigate future challenges because we want to find out what the future has in, soul, in store because the future is such a, a, an exciting place. Uh, so, you know, thank you very much for coming on uh, the show. Uh, uh, it's been fascinating. Thanks for taking the time out. Really, really appreciate it. Well, uh, thank you for having me. And just everyone know, you know, I know that sometimes we challenge you with ideas, but the future is unlimited. You're unlimited. You can make it, you can do it, you can be part of it, and you're going to be a very, very valid part of it. It's not about profits. It's not about all those things. There's so much more we can do uh, when we put those things aside. If you do what's right, it's going to, you know, we can do amazing things. If you add value, you don't have to worry about anything. Wonderful. All right, well, thank you very much, Liz. Uh, that's Debt Nation, where we are busy putting death out of business. <laughs>